Hey there YouTube, Air of Carthage here. Gonna bring you some Empire Total War <coughs> online. I just did Napoleon, I guess we'll go Empire, and then I'll go back to Rome for the next set of videos. Um, so, but I think you should enjoy this throwback to Empire. Um, I am playing on the Cuba map, so this is an unlikely meeting of America versus Austria in Cuba. So quite unlikely, but if you think that's unlikely, just wait till my next video. Anyway, I have four units of these long riflemen. I have two units, or sorry, one unit of six pound horse artillery, one unit of 24 pound howitzer. I have a second New York, first Delaware, first Maryland, two line infantry, and three Minutemen, which are militia, who were to be ready on a minute's notice, and that is not them. This is them in the brownish uniforms. And I have one unit of um, Pioneer Militia, which is not right there either. My cavalry consists of um, a Household Cav, a Pulaski's Legion. Here they are getting shot by shrapnel shot. I'm so kind to my troops that I let them get shot like that. Yes, yeah, so um, Household Cav, Regiment of Horse, uh, Pulaski's Legion, and then the Second Continental Light Dragoons. And these, uh, Pulaski's Legion uh, was actually started by a Polish immigrant, so pretty cool story. Anyway, I'm marching up my troops. They were all out of formation. I bought a new keyboard and mouse recently, a wireless one, and uh, they're not working out too well. A uh, little bit of, well, the mouse is working good. The keyboard's a little bit glitchy. I don't think it was compatible with Windows 7, so I'm going to get a new one. So when I played this battle, I was experiencing some trouble micromanaging my troops due to that and it was uh, quite meddlesome. Anyway, uh, my opponent got the first artillery shots and uh, caused some damage to my horses and a couple of my infantry units, but now my six pound horse artillery is in range and I'm firing shrapnel shot at his six pounder artillery. My artillery is slightly better positioned on this hill than his is down here in this little valley. So he's unable to get um, some real good direct hits on my artillery. And I am currently moving my 24-pound um, howitzer into position. And once it's there, I'm going to open up on his other 6-pound horse art. Let's take a look at what kind of army my opponent has visible at the moment. Of course, these two 6-pound horse arts. Neither of which are... Yeah, I haven't dealt any damage to either one yet. I haven't gotten an artillery hit. What he has visible is two line infantry and two guard units. Um, but you can be assured that since he's playing as Austria and you're not seeing any cavalry on the field. Of course, it could be hidden. Um, but you can be assured that he is most likely using large amounts of light infantry. And here, um, I scored uh, a near hit with my artillery. You saw that shrapnel shot. I'm not quite sure how I didn't kill one of his men. But um, I'm at least getting on target now. I have a pretty darn good angle on this unit that he has here. And he's positioned this artillery much better, and that's the one that's scoring most of the hits. So you got to make sure that with your artillery positioning that you put it in a very good spot because if you look at the terrain here, although it looks fairly flat from above, there are some nuances in the terrain that you definitely need to be aware of. And if you're not, um, you can definitely lower the effectiveness of your artillery. There I hit one of his artillery men, but not, not too much damage overall. Now my opponent has yet to see my long riflemen as I have been sneaking them. And so I'm sure that he knows I have them, but he's not quite sure of their positioning. So here's my 24-pounder um, my howitzers are about to fire. My target is this 6-pound horse art right here. Let's watch and um, see how effective that turns out to be. You'll see my howitzer shots incoming there. You can see that my, um, my first volley goes wide right and I do not score any damage, but at that same moment, my opponent, um, or I, I'm actually close enough with my line infantry that I can see now these Jaegers that he had hidden. He has two units of Jaegers here and two units of Grenzers. That is a, or sorry, three units of Jaegers, two units of Grenzers. That is a lot of firepower in this vicinity. I'm using this Pioneer Militia unit that I told you about. Um, they are my meat shield. You can see them absorbing a ludicrous amount of fire. And now that his, um, uh, infantry has expelled their volleys. I can run my long rifles forward that my opponent was not aware of their whereabouts and I can get some uh, free shots on his light infantry and then I can retreat uh, if he moves into range. And there comes my second round of quick lime and check that out. That uh, poisonous cloud of gas there is going to make the screen lag <laughs> I'm sure and it's also uh, going to kill this entire unit of horse artillery. Just absolutely wipe them out. 
no one's left. So, yep, a uh, very effective quick lime shot. Uh, howitzers are quite a deadly piece of artillery if used correctly. And the reason it lags is because there's some really, um, the quick lime, uh, I rag on the effects of Empire Total War quite a lot because the effects were cruddy, but the quick lime effect is very good. Um, as you saw there, and that's part of the reason why it was lagging, because there's so much smoke, the f uh, even the best of computers, kind of like mine, uh, lag. And especially with fraps running. In any case, you can see uh, now more of my opponent's infantry. So here he has three units of Jaegers, three units of Grinzers, three more units of Grinzers, and two more units of Jaegers. And uh, that is a lot of infantry. Here comes some more of my quick lime shot. And, um... It gets into his horses, but doesn't kill uh, any of his artillerymen. So I'm trying to take down his other unit of artillery. My opponent has an enormous amount of firepower in his army. And then to follow up with these two units of guards and line infantry, his army is going to be extremely deadly. Um, especially against my American army, of which I have three militia units making up part of my line. And so the morale is going to be quite low. Now, Minutemen um, are pretty good for militia, but, again, they're militia. They are decent in a melee fight, though, for militia. So there's a little bit of trade-offs um, in, in Minutemen and how good they are. So, like I said, they're decent. So I'm going to do a little bit of kiting on my opponent, which is firing and falling back. So I fired my initial volleys with my long rifles, and then I fell back to the protection of my line. And now I'm trying to lure his light infantry in, and my opponent did fall for that. And now, while he's marching and slightly out of position, I'm going to do a quick cavalry strike on uh, this pocket of line infantry on his left flank, and that will give me the decisive advantage I need to stay alive uh, for the time being in this battle, but the battle is far from over. You can see I quickly route one of those units of Grinzers, and uh, once these light infantry get into an extended melee fight with my cav, um, that's where my cavalry is going to excel. This is only light cavalry that I have in this fight, um, but light cavalry, uh, this is one of the things that they excel at, is mopping up light infantry, or otherwise harassing enemy armies. So you can see that I've ruined my um, opponent's light infantry strike on this flank, and so now he's going to focus his attention to the other flank. Here's some heavy uh, cav actually I have that wasted those Grinzers. Now those Grinzers did get some shots off at the last second though and damaged my cav, but I'm going to go ahead and keep the charge going and move into the next unit of Grinzers, and this is going to take away um, a lot of my opponent's firepower. But you can see that he's pretty quick to react. These Grinzers right here um, turned and got some more shots off. So my cavalry has been extremely weakened. Uh, they did manage, though, to at least distract those Grinzers for a little while. And I think my opponent is making a, a brash, but, f you know, somewhat sane move here. His men are a little too bunched up, and they're going to take a lot of fire coming in. But his idea is that if he can get these guards into melee with my extremely inferior um, American line infantry and militia, that he can quickly rout them and then turn his attention elsewhere in the battle. Now see, my long rifles slow his men down just for a second, though. In a melee fight, they're not going to last long. But just in that short time that they're being, um, that they're fighting, my men are firing in, and I kill a lot of this Austrian infantry. And so that's going to weaken them for the melee. But do not discount guards in melee, because they are incredibly strong. Um, some of the only units that are better in melee are uh, some of the dedicated melee units that you'll find in the game when you upgrade them. So there they are. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, the fight here. You can see that we have uh, Minutemen versus lion or guards. Um, definitely a lopsided fight. So even though the guards are outnumbered, they're going to be um, giving my men a pretty good beating here, and I'm going to need to reinforce those Minutemen. Let's take a look at the other side of the fight. My elite line infantry is on this side of the battle, and American elite line infantry is probably pretty much just on par with uh, standard line infantry, which is good. Um, it's historically accurate, and that's the way it should be. So that was my first Maryland, taking some shots at these uh, Grinzers, and then I'm going to back off because I don't want to get my uh, elite infantry shot up. Over here, I have charged my second New York into these um, Grinzers, and here they are in the midst of that fight. They'll easily defeat these Grinzers, but my opponent did have two more units that were hidden in the beginning of the fight, and it is two more units of guards, so I've got to get rid of these guys. So I have three units of my good line infantry uh, versus these two units of guards. And um, you know how my military tactics go. I'm big about um, suicidal sacrifice, or let's say heroic sacrifice, in order to, uh, to make it sound better. 
patriotic sacrifice. There we go. So my second New York is going to make a sacrifice for the good of America and charge into these uh, Austrian invaders invading our new found territory in Cuba. <laughs> anyway, um, here's the fight. It'll keep these guys distracted long enough to keep them from firing into my other infantry, which is indeed firing into them right now. So there's my first Maryland. And uh, back here he has gotten some, uh, some Jaegers into a fight with my first Delaware, but they're going to lose that fight with my Delaware unit. So he goes ahead and peer, uh, peels these guards off to get into a melee uh, bout with my first Maryland. That was a good move on his part, um, because the quicker he gets into melee, the better for him. And my first Maryland is way outnumbered, because they got beat up by Grinzers. So, um, again, uh, <laughs> my troops here are going to get into a bloody fight that's most likely going to result in the end of their life. But uh, they're proud to follow my commands, and um, of course being in my army is extremely risky especially if you're a cavalryman or some kind of cheap militia unit. My long rifles here are pouring out fire onto the uh, sides of these guards and are going to help me out and win that fight. Let's go take a look at the uh, big fight that started earlier. I have lost units, my opponent has lost units, but now I have him surrounded and his men are um, uh, starting to get tired from having fought for so long. It says they're very tired there. Let's get in and get some close-ups. I brought some uh, Minutemen in to the rear of his guards and you can see that he doesn't have many guards left, but these guys will fight nearly to the death, even without um, chevrons. You can see that they do have a chevron, though, from the number of kills that they've made. But there they go, they finally break, and so I, um, by uh, a pretty narrow margin, win this fight on the right flank, and it was only because, I didn't get to show you, but I, I brought in troops to outflank those Austrian guards, and that was the only reason I won that fight. And so seeing as that most of their army has routed, these other guards are going to be slightly easier to break. And also this unit got all chewed up by my long rifles. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and charge them with everything I have in this vicinity and one last patriotic charge. So <laughs> I want to make sure that all of my men who can possibly be killed are killed. Not really, but it seems that way sometimes when I'm in command. So here's the last pocket of Austrian resistance fighting bravely for their lives. But they have to rout. There's just simply not enough of them uh, left to uh, maintain the fight. So good game to my opponent. Hope you enjoyed this uh, strange battle of America versus Austria in Cuba. Um, I thought it was pretty fun. My opponent played honorably. I'm a bit rusty on my empire skills. And like I said, my uh, micromanagement was pretty poor as well because my keyboard is so glitchy. Here's some of the unit statistics for any of those who are interested in. You can see my cavalry really didn't do anything amazing, but they did manage to uh, thwart that Austrian light infantry assault. And you kind of have to make uh, risky moves like that in order to beat that type of Austrian army. Look at this unit of Minutemen, 142 kills, man. These guys were beast. That's awesome. Got militia getting that many kills. Had a unit of line infantry do well. Unit of long rifles here got 125 kills. Wow. So anyway, um, there's the statistics. You can see my opponent's name there. Hope you enjoyed that battle.